Hello guys, Peter Mbiria here. Now, what do we have today? Definitely it's a Land Rover. This is a 109, okay? This is a 2.25 liter engine with a single carburetor here. And um, any guesses why it's here? Of course, it's pretty obvious. This is the cover that we've just removed. And it has come for a water rent dose. We need to make this engine feel efficient and squeeze more power out of it. Okay, so this is the current setup. You can, you can see it. You can see the lead wires. You can see the distributor. You can see the mechanical fuel pump down there. Okay, of course you have the air duct or the air pipe with the air cleaner here. I've showed you the carburetor. This is the intake manifold that needs to be polished so that now it brings out the aluminum look. And then the exhaust manifold here. So, it's about midday right now. How does it start? And, uh, oh, wait. Yeah, the owner has done a very clean job with the interior. Pretty impressive. Very nice seats. Okay. And even behind there, very practical when you're out there in the jungle. So, having the keys in a very nice tag. Let me see. I just insert it. Oh, not this one. Is it this one? No. Oh, sorry. This one. Okay. It's locked in gear. Now that is in place. It's on. Okay. It starts a bit lazy. Don't, 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 don't shut down on me. So let me just give it a little bit of more air. Ah, okay. Let me try again. Okay, start. Okay. Give it a little bit of air down here. Okay, it picks up the rev. Okay. So I'm trying to imagine when it's very cold in the morning, how it starts. A little bit of air. I don't want it to stall. It has a bit of miss, misfire. And even you can hear how the exhaust tone is like. Okay. But that is about to change. A very nice handy uh, machine. So what it need to do right now is first of all uh, measure compression. Just need to know how much compression uh, is it able to produce at any one time. So I'm bringing in the kit as you are about to see right now. Let me first turn it off. Okay, remove the keys. wires normally hold at the base oh okay it has gripped pretty well this one as well the other one and cylinder number one okay that is in order and so uh, my guy here will remove the spark plugs this is number 16 please proceed So this is our compression test kit, okay? So you have the gauge, you have the flex hose, and then different adapters, okay? So we just need to remove the spark plugs, which is basically box number 16. 
So now I have the tools ready, my ratchet, my blower. Now, let me start removing the spark plugs to measure the compression. It's always good to have your gloves in place to avoid such injuries, okay? So what I'm doing right now is I want to check compression for each cylinder. Now that there is a pumping machine, of course the pistons rise up and down with rings. And what I want to do with this gauge is test how much compression it can create at any one time. That is very key to tell me whether the engine will produce power or whether the engine, the engine needs to be overhauled. Okay? The rule of thumb is at least to give me 120 psi, but I need to first do what? Test the compression. So I need to open it. And since I don't want the outside dirt to get inside, I need to blow the You can see the amount of dirt that has come out of it. So this is cylinder number one. Number two is angled, so that's why I'm using. Oh, it was already loosened up. That's number two. Number three is hard, so number three, number four. All right again. Blue a little bit. What I don't want is dirt getting inside. This will be a nightmare to remove it inside the combustion chamber. Of course, compression is very key for every engine. And if you want to squeeze every power out of it through the water end system, we need to know that the engine is able to create enough power. Man, okay, it was burning rich. You can tell by how the spark plugs look like. There's the iridium one. Okay. There's number one. Number two. Still burning rich. Okay. That's number two. Number three. burning a little bit better okay that's number three and then number four still rich okay so the first observation is none of the plugs is wet so at least it's a good indication well this has a little bit of wetness but from afar but the rest are dry so we don't have a risk of having um the cylinders consuming oil okay now let me put let me attach my gauge we'll start with cylinder one okay going in pretty well nice now i attach my gauge What I'll need now to do is go ahead and crank it. In this case, I would wish to remove uh, the ignition coil. But the, the pins have been welded in place. That is not supposed to be, it's supposed to have a socket that you slide in. But now this has been welded in place. There's no provision of removing this at all at all. So what to do now? I might need to cut this. Just need to cut one of the wires because either way this I'll remove it entirely with the conversion and then this is fully reset now I'll just crank it so I close the vehicle I turn the key on and then crank
all right so we have cranked it a little bit and the compression is at uh, 110 psi not the best because uh, the rule of thumb is 120 psi okay not too bad though so this would still work now what about the rest of the cylinders this is number one number two number two okay this has already been reset do the same procedure what do we have here number two ah, approximately 114 114 psi okay now let's go to number three I need to do on this engine specifically is before I roll out it comes with low compression. I need to check how was it manufactured. What's the compression ratio? Is it 9 to 1? Is it 10 to 1? Is it 8 to 1? Okay, that greatly affects the results of the compression test. Right? So let's still not jump to the conclusion that it has low compression for nothing. It could be coming from the manufacturer as is. Number three. That is the lowest so far, slightly above 100, maybe 102 psi, right? Or 7 bar. Not that good. Does it warrant immediate overhaul? Not really. But in some cases, yes. Now on to the last one. <laughs> that is so bad now this is bad this is uh, 25 psi no 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 let me redo it okay reset pipe is okay connect solid connection everything is okay i repeat Even the way the engine cranks is slightly different than the rest, I can't tell. <laughs> There's no improvement whatsoever. This is not okay whatsoever. It doesn't matter the engine whether it's at uh, 8 to 1 compression ratio. This, now this is terrible. That could explain why it sounded like it had a miss. Because of course number 4 it's not up or retreating any power whatsoever this is bad this is so bad coming to think of it okay so you might want to have the engine checked because even if we convert it to water and vfi the computer can only produce power when the mechanics of the engines are sound okay when you have proper compression it doesn't consume oil okay it means that those two things it will allow you to have proper power output with such a low compression the engine will behave as if it has a misfire simply because one of the cylinders is not producing enough compression that the ECU can produce power from okay so ladies and gentlemen that's how we do compression tests this is just a kit with a gauge that just measures how much compression the each cylinder, the engine that matter, can produce at any one time. 
that will tell us whether the engine creates power after the conversion. Thank you guys.